In addition to justifying his ministry and authority, Paul used 2 Corinthians to announce a collection for the needy Christians in Jerusalem. In chapter 8, Paul offered two examples of sacrificial giving. The first one was the church in Macedonia, where they fully surrendered their will to God's and shared their wealth beyond what anyone expected. Paul said, and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God, also to us. 2 Corinthians 8.5 the second example was Jesus himself. Spiritually speaking, Jesus was very rich and became very poor. Why would Jesus do such a thing? So that he could make us poor people, well, eternally rich. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Paul then offered instructions in giving. Give knowingly, give willingly, give realistically, and give confidently. What a great checklist for us today when we consider our offerings to our church and other worthwhile ministries. Finally, Paul reminded the Corinthians that financial giving is similar to the other spiritual gifts. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 and 8. Paul ended his teaching on giving with a lesson in stewardship. He promised to send three men to receive the offering for Jerusalem. One was Titus, and the other two are unnamed in Scripture. But why three men? To ensure accountability and avoid the appearance of impropriety. Another great reminder for the church today. used the final chapters of 2 Corinthians to once again answer his critics. This wasn't only important for Paul's credibility and calling, but it provides a series of credentials that should apply to any leader in the church even today. For instance, in chapter 10, Paul addressed the issues of cowardice, walking in the flesh, and personal weakness. In chapter 11, Paul declared his calling as an apostle and pointed to the evidence of his suffering to support his claim. And finally, in chapter 12, Paul offered his divine revelations from God and other supernatural signs to support his claim of apostleship. In the heart of this letter, we find the hearts of Paul. Paul writes much about his personal sufferings Shortly after Paul's supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, the Lord said, This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Acts 9, 15 and 16. For some reason, this was Christ's calling for Paul's life as a missionary. According to the New Testament, Paul's sufferings began almost immediately after his miraculous conversion and continued for the next 30 years. Now, it may come as a surprise to you that Paul was not afraid to use irony and sarcasm in his writing. The final chapters of 2 Corinthians incorporate what many Bible scholars have called the fool's speech. Now, I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let no one take me for a fool, but if you do, then tolerate me just as you would a fool, so that I might do a little boasting. 
In this self-confident boasting, I am not talking as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too will boast. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. 2 Corinthians 11, 16 through 30. Paul was mocked by the super spiritual leaders who made big speeches, loved the spotlight, and were preoccupied with spectacular spiritual gifts. Here, Paul was mocking them back by boasting of his weakness, his persecutions, and sufferings all of which showed his true calling as an apostle and his true dedication to sharing the gospel around the world, even unto death. Oh, hi, it's TV's Dave Stotts, and I'm here to tell you to Hit the thing and the thing and make sure you ring the, the thing for more of drive-through history because that's what we all need.